My name is Dick Henshaw and I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. And my first exposure to HBT was in 1995 uh, when I was uh, talking to my client Tom Labonte at PNC Bank and um, he introduced me to Jim Robinson and said, you know, Jim, you've been doing a good job teaching people about uh, human performance technology and Dick, you've been doing a good job teaching people about instructional systems design, but you guys are confusing my people. And he said, you two either have to figure out how to integrate these two processes so my people don't get confused or you're out of here <laughs> in Tom's typical fashion. So that was how I got to meet Jim. Uh, I learned about his process. He already knew about my process. And uh, it really changed the way I looked at training um, as not being the be-all, end-all from that day forward. I really opened my eyes to a whole new way of doing business with my customers. My biggest influences, of course, began uh, at Indiana University in graduate school in 1978 and 9. Um, I think the guy who made me fall in love with instructional systems design was Mike Melinda. Uh, Warren Stevens there was one of the uh, first professors I had who really gave me an appreciation for this profession and made a behavioral uh, scientist out of me. Um, <clears throat> so I, that was certainly my first biggest uh, influence. Also, Jim and Dana Robinson, and I asked uh, Jim to come do a workshop for my company in 1996. So we have been practicing uh, performance consultants uh, at my company since that time. Uh, and a, a project that we recently worked on in HPT is one that really began with an order taking request from KeyBank about five years ago when they were putting in a new teller system and asked us to design the training for that. We didn't get it because a software company offered a quicker, cheaper approach and the IT department selected them. I happened to be going to visit friends in Cleveland a few years later, went to see them and they said, oh, we hate that. Just, it turned out terribly. We need you to redo it. It turned out to be a much better thing to let them hit that brick wall at warp speed because instead of just taking an order to do initial training for a system conversion, they said our entire teller program is really not working for us. We were able to do a traditional task analysis, <clears throat> change their approach from a topic-based approach to a task and performance-based approach, completely redid the entire thing. And I really, the best thing is I didn't really do the work my staff did it, and my staff did it better than I ever could have done it. The client is delighted. Um, the results are going to be very different and one of the things that really scared my staff is when they said but you know this is such a different approach our learners are really gonna this is very contrary to our culture what are we going to do and we said well that's where the change initiative comes so it was also gave us the opportunity to do a change management initiative um, and change their entire learning culture so it was there very much became a transformational project for us and that is what is the result of the influence that discovering HPT had on me 10, 12 years ago. Uh, I do have a 30 second elevator speech. Uh, I tell my clients that I would rather focus on results than activities. I always tell them that we first need to look at fixing the process. The second thing we need to look at is providing performance support and then whatever is left, and that's what needs to be done with training which is always the most difficult and the most costly approach. My current and future focus for learning about HPT um, is through coming back to my professional home at ISPI. Um, I have started three chapters. Uh, they really didn't, the first two really didn't take hold in Charlotte. So I thought, well, if I couldn't beat ASTD, I would join them. Um, and I did that for a while. Then I ran into Guy Wallace and uh, we decided to start a Charlotte chapter which is now doing really well and is healthy and that has brought me back to ISPI. So that is where I expect to continue to develop my professional skills at Human Performance Technology.